Hi, my name is Amy Chen. I'm a Regional Anesthesia Fellow at Stanford University, and today we're going to talk about transversus abdom abdominis plane blocks, or otherwise known as TAP blocks. So just a brief introduction, the main muscles of the abdominal wall include the rectus abdominis, which is near the midline, and then the external oblique, internal oblique, and the transversus abdominis. The abdominal wall is innervated by the thoracoabdominal nerves from T6 to T12. The upper abdomen is innervated by nerves coming from the costal margin or the edge of the lower ribs. These nerves can be targeted by the subcostal tap to cover the incisional pain of the upper abdomen from T6 to T9. The lower abdomen below the umbilicus is covered by the lateral tap block. It covers T10 to T12 or L1. Indications for the tap block. Analgesia for abdominal surgeries and C-sections. These blocks can be performed before or after surgery. Because the tap block is a plain block, it can be performed while the patient is under general anesthesia. For the blocks, you want to use a lower concentration of local anesthetic with higher volumes. Example is quarter percent bupivacaine with 20 to 30 mils per side that you're injecting. Remember to always calculate the max dose of local anesthetics so the tap plane can be vascular. And uh, also remember that tap blocks are good for the abdominal wall pain, but not visceral pain associated with C-sections and other abdominal surgeries. So let's talk about the lateral tap block first. For probe positioning, you want to place the probe. Typically, uh, you, you, uh, the curvilinear probe. You can also use the linear probe if the patient is uh, relatively lean. You want to place the probe between the iliac crest and the costal margin at the mid-axillary line, as shown here in the picture on the left. The lateral pat block, again, can be used to cover incisions in the lower abdomen from T10 to T12. Again, with the patient supine, the ultrasound is placed between the iliac crest and the costal margin at the mid-axillary line. The three muscles, the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis are identified, and the needle is advanced to the target, as shown in the ultrasound image in the upper right. The correct location can be confirmed with saline, the plane should be appear dark when you inject the local in the right place, whereas an incorrect injection into the muscle will appear hazy. The injection of local should depress the transversus abdominis muscles, shown here in the lower uh, ultrasound image. You can see that after injecting, the local anesthetic forms a dark um, area between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis, and you can also see this transversus abdominis has been pushed down by the local. Because of the high volume of local anesthetic used for these blocks, so typically we're talking about anywhere from 40 to 60 mils of quarter percent uh, bupivacaine, the patient needs to be monitored for last. It's also important to visualize the needle throughout this entire procedure to avoid accidental, perp accidental perforation of the peritoneum or bowel. Remember that the peritoneum is right below the transversus abdominis muscle. Let's talk about the subcostal tap next. The subcostal tap block is used for incisions of the upper abdomen. For example, an X-lap or laparoscopic ports, like in a lap coli. The ultrasound probe is placed along the costal margin parallel to the lower edge of the ribs, which I'll show you in a minute. The ultrasound is moved until the rectus abdominis muscle is seen overlying the transversus abdominis muscle. The needle is inserted medial to lateral, targeting the intersection between the rectus and the transversus, and then you can use saline to advance the needle as the muscle planes unzipper or open up. If the needle is in the correct plane, the fluid will travel into the transversus abdominis plane between the internal oblique. Like the lateral tap block, you can use a total of 20 mils of local anesthetic. Here is the probe position for the subcostal block. You can see in this upper uh, image that you place the probe um, obliquely along the costal margin. 
And to find the right plane, you start medial, you start towards the midline and scan lateral until you see the transverses abdominis plane come into view below the rectus. And here you can see in the picture at the bottom, the needle injecting local into the correct plane. Rectus sheath blocks. These are used to cover incisions that are midline or involve the umbilicus, such as, the, uh, as an umbilical hernia repair. To do this block, you place the ultrasound along the lateral edge of the rectus sheath muscle to see the rectus muscle overlying the posterior rectus sheath. The needle is advanced lateral to medial, which is different from the subcostal or tap blocks, to target the plane between the rectus muscle and the posterior rectus sheath. So shown here in the bottom ultrasound image, you can see this big muscle in the middle is the rectus sheath. And then you want to inject your local in the posterior um, rectus sheath. For this block, you use 20, about 20 milliliters of local anesthetic on each side. And again, this is with more dilute local, such as quarter percent bupivacaine. Here's how the probe positioning should look for a rectus sheath block. And here's an ultrasound image showing uh, what layer you're, you should target. You're looking for the rectus abdominis muscle and injecting um, below it into the, uh, the rectus abdominis sheath. Here's one more picture summarizing probe positioning. The one in the upper left is the subcostal block, the one in the upper right, lower right, these are lateral tap blocks. And the one in the um, bottom left um, could be a rectus sheath block, positioning for a rectus sheath block. Quiz question, during a transversus abdominis plane block, between which two muscle layers should the local anesthetic be injected? The answer is between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscles. Let's look at some examples of uh, imaging from um, real patients. Here's an example of a tap plane. And here are the muscle layers, and then the yellow arrow corresponds to the projected needle path you would take. Remember, the local needs to be deposited between the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscles. Here's another example. In this example, the muscle layers are very thin. The needle would need to be carefully advanced from medial to lateral between the internal oblique and the TA or transversus abdominis muscles, taking care not to perforate the underlying peritoneum or bowel. And here's a third example. Now let's take some time to practice ultrasca ultrasound um, scanning e each other for the tap planes. And then we'll go into some case discussions. Our first case discussion. A 22 year old female status post urgent C-section under spinal anesthesia. Because this was, a, this was an emergency, there was no time to add duramorph to the local, anesthe uh, to the local anesthetic. She's otherwise healthy, no prior surgeries, and no allergies. What are some of her options for post-op analgesia? Let's go over some standard post-cesarean section pain control. Suboptimal pain management after C-sections is associated with chronic pain, greater opioid use, delayed recovery, impaired bonding with the baby, and an increased risk of postpartum depression. The use of neuroaxial morphine or Dormorph and non-opioid pain medicines such as NSAIDs or Tylenol are recommended for all women undergoing cesarean delivery with neuroaxial anesthesia unless this medi the medication is contraindicated. 
oral opioids such as, such as oxycodone can be given uh, on an as needed basis. For patients with severe pain that do not, who do not respond to the medications on the previous slide, or for patients who do not receive intrathecal morphine, there are some other options for pain control. There's IV opioids such as morphine or Dilaudid. Regional anesthesia uh, and tap blocks have been shown to be effective in women who uh, had a C-section and did not receive Duramorph. Decadron is another option. Ketamine is something that also can be used. It's been shown that a single dose of 10 milligrams of ketamine has been associated with lower pain scores two weeks postpartum. And the drug may also have a role in patients with chronic pain or for women who are at risk of developing persistent chronic incisional pain after C-section. Remember too that the surgeon can always do um, Bupivacaine or another long-lasting local anesthetic into the wound. Be careful though that um, if you are planning to do a tap block, because you may not, uh, you may go over the toxic dose if the surgeon has already infiltrated with their local anesthetic. The lateral tap block can be used to cover incisions in the lower abdomen from T10 to L1. So the fantaseal incision can be covered with a tap block. So just to summarize, duramorph or neuroaxial morphine is, uh, works really well for pain control after C-sections and is better than IV or oral opioids. Opioid sparing analgesia is always recommended since opioids are associated with uh, transfers through the breast milk, and that may cause uh, neonatal sedation. Lipophilic drugs such as fentanyl are more likely to cross into breast milk. Highly protein-bound drugs such as NSAIDs, ibuprofen, and local anesthetics have limited drug transfers, so they are very safe to give to moms who are nursing. Tap blocks are effective when patients did not receive intrathecal morphine. Tap blocks are a great option for patients who have their C-section under general anesthesia or in patients um, or in, uh, areas where Duramorph is not available. Let's do another case discussion. We have a 40-year-old male who is in a motor vehicle accident who undergoes urgent exploratory laparotomy with a large vertical incision. The surgery otherwise goes well and the patient is stabilized. What type of regional anesthesia could you perform for his incisional pain prior to extubation? Which local anesthetic would you, would you use? And with how much volume? Let's say the patient is 70 kilos. So for a large vertical incision, you could do bilateral subcostal block, tap blocks as well as bilateral lateral tap blocks. So that's four injections. In terms of which local anesthetic would you use, you wanna use something long acting since the patient is likely to be in a great deal of pain for the first two days uh, postoperatively. I would choose bupivacaine or ropivacaine. Now let's calculate the max dose that this patient could receive. He's 70 kilos. Say we're using bupivacaine. The toxic dose of bupivacaine is 2.5 milligrams per kilogram. So 70 times 2.5 is 175 milligrams. If you're using quarter percent bupivacaine, you can therefore give up to 70 milliliters of local anesthetic. So if you're doing two subcostal blocks and two lateral taps, you can give 15 milliliters for each injection. So 15 times four injections gives a total of 60 milliliters, which is under the maximum dose of 70 milliliters. Remember, before you do the blocks, always check that the surgeon hasn't already infiltrated local anesthetic and always make sure that emergency meds, such as intralipid, are available since tap planes are known to be quite vascular.
And here is a, a diagram and the top flux you would perform for a large vertical incision. To summarize, top blocks cover abdominal wall pain, but not visceral pain. Remember that the nerves lie between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscles. The tap can perform at the subcostal level, which covers the upper abdomen, or lateral, which would cover the lower abdomen. Tap blocks are for pain relief only, so not surgical anesthesia, and they can be used after a C-section. Use a lower concentration, such as quarter percent bupivacaine, with higher volumes on both sides per side, so 20 to 30 milliliters per side. And again, tap plans are vascular, so inject carefully, remember to aspirate every five mils, and watch for last.